In this video, we'll demonstrate how to use and control the Load On Demand feature of the RAD Combo Box. To do this, we'll show how to configure the RAD Combo Box to load data items on demand. So you see I've got a RAD Combo Box here and a button that will show me the count of the items that are in the RAD Combo Box. Then when I click inside the box, the items are loaded and you see that the number of items in the box over here has automatically been updated to 91. We'll also show how to suppress the data load until a given condition is met by using the items requesting event. So again, you see I have zero items in my combo box right now. And if I want to wait before loading until I have put in a certain number of characters, then I can set the items requesting event to cancel this request until I've got at least two characters typed into the input area of the combo box. So I'll begin my project by creating a new ASP.NET AJAX-enabled website. And if you don't already have this template, there'll be a link on the last frame of the video where you can go get it for yourself on the Internet. And the reason that we use this template is because it automatically places an ASP script manager component onto the form for us. Now that component is important because for AJAX-enabled components, it maintains the communication between the web application and the client. So I'm going to start by putting a RAD combo box onto the form and I'm going to select a different skin for it. I'm going to use this Web 2.0 skin. Then we'll close up the smart tag and the next thing that we'll add to the form is a data source. This will be a SQL data source and we're going to connect this up to the Northwind database and we'll use the customers table from that database selecting all columns then we finish. Now I'm going to put a text box to display my count onto the form so I'll just take a regular HTML text component and put it up here and then we'll also put a regular HTML button onto the form and we'll set the button so that the text value says show count. Then if we go to the markup page and go down to our input button we can say on click equals show count and then that's a JavaScript method that we're going to write. So we'll put that down here. And then we'll just paste in a show count function that we've already created. It's going to go out and find the combo box, this rad combo box one up here and also find the label, that's the text one label that we created up here. Then it's going to set the value of the label, that's the, the visible text that's displayed, to be the number of items that are inside the combo box, which we use this get count on the get items function of the combo box. This returns our red combo box items array, the count we add a space to it because JavaScript's that way about dealing with numbers and putting them into string values. Then for the first pass, we also need to enable the entry of custom text in the field that's going to let us do some input into the input area. We need to enable load on demand and this is the property that is going to defer the loading of the items into the combo box. The load on demand that is the demand that's going to be made by the RAD combo box is actually set up through the event handlers and that's going to be the items requested event. And so what we'll do with this event is again paste in some code that we've already created. And what this is going to do for us now is set up a new select command for our SQL data source saying select everything from customers where the company name is like whatever is passed in as the argument to this command. And this text here is going to be the text that is typed into the input area of the combo box. And then we've got to set the data source for the combo box, set the text field to be the company name, the data field to be customer ID, and then do a data bind. So if we run the application at this point, you see when it first comes up, if we click on show count, it shows us that there's zero items. Now as soon as we do anything like hit this drop down or click in this area here, it automatically loads everything up. And if we want to see that count updated automatically, 
then what we have to do is go over to our design page and go back down to one of the properties that says on items requested right here and we'll say show count. So if we run that again you see our count is zero and then when we go into the box you see it automatically at the completion of the items request will run that show count function and show the number of items in the box here. Then the next thing that happens is because we allowed text to be typed into this box, we can type, for instance, the letter F, and it will filter everything down to just those companies whose name begins with the letter F, and it shows us automatically that there's only eight of them. And then we put a U, and we get this company here, which I think if we made the combo box a little bit longer, we'd see it's a Portuguese company. So we'll just do that for the next time around. So the next thing that I want to do is put a restriction on the number of characters that we have to have typed into the input area. And the reason that I want to do that is, let's say we have a really large customer list, and I want to don't want to load the entire thing down in and then load a little bit less of it in, a little bit less of it in. I want to wait till we've got at least three characters in before I start showing a bunch of customer names. And so I can set up an event which I will call stop requesting which will fire on the client item requesting event and then in the markup we can add our stop requesting function. The stop requesting function passes two things in. It passes in the combo box that's calling us and some arguments. What this arguments does for us is it has this set cancel method on it and with the set cancel method if we determine that the length of the text typed into the combo box is less than two characters then we set cancel to true and when this gets passed back it will suppress the item request back to the web application as soon as we've got two characters in it'll pass the request back to the application and execute our items requested event for us so now let's run this again and you see again we've got nothing in the combo box. If we click in here, we just executed the item request, but it got to the items requesting, ran the JavaScript function, determined that there were not at least two characters in here, and so it returned without populating the dropdown. So again, if I put in an F, nothing. If I put in a U, what that did is said, okay, we've got two characters in there now. It went and completed the item request and then ran that other client side item that we had entered, that on client items requested function, which ran the show count for us and said, yep, you only got one item out there in your drop down. So that's a brief overview of how you can manipulate the load on demand event to both populate your drop down and to suppress population when you're not ready to have it populated yet. For more information, technical discussion forums, and examples, please go to www.telerik.com.